All right, in the last series of segments, we focused on the first classical partial differential equations that we face. And the first one was heat equation. Now I'm gonna to go to the wave equation. But the good thing is, as you will see, the solution will be quite similar to approach wise. I have a string, so let me go ahead and draw the string. Okay, that software will help me. It was not a good line at all. And basically what I do is I pull the sum track path as an example, and I, I may let it go or I may, um, you know, push it up with some velocity or I should, you know, I may pull it down, right? But the thing is, the length of the string is L. Um, it can be a guitar string if you want to think about that way, okay? And this is straight, stretched pretty tight between the two points on an x-axis. So I'm looking at this as x-axis. Um, and let's just for the convenience to be consistent with the heat equation, let's just call these two points as 0 to L. And I need to assume that the vibration is in the xy plane, right? So this flexibility is perpendicular to the x and it's called the transverse vibration. So I need to do a couple of uh, assumptions. Um, they are not outrageous assumptions, but the string is flexible, reasonable, and the string is homogeneous. It's very similar to the heat equation. I assume that the rod was homogeneous. Um, this is important. The displacement that I'm dealing with is small compared to L. Obviously, when I draw things, you can see I'm exaggerating, just like the simulation software such as ANSYS. You know, when they showed you the result, they exaggerate the results. So it's the same thing over here. And if you think about the guitar, I mean, that's kind of, uh, you know, it's going to snap, right? You, you cannot do that. So the point is, you know, the, the, the vibrations is happening very small amplitude as opposed to the length that I'm dealing with over here. And very similar to this, I will say that this du dx, you see what du dx is, um, is the slope of this displacement curve, let's call it that way, is small, right? It goes along with the previous uh, assumption. Um, tension, which I'm going to call this as t, okay? And let's write tension because I'm going to use this, it will be an important parameter. x tangent the string reasonable because it's all associated with the movement that is perpendicular the transverse vibration and other thing is I'm ignoring the effect of gravity G is negligible so what I'm trying to say is I have this T the exertion that I get from that will be much higher than the gravity so I will be able to go ahead and neglect the gravity so if I am uh, you know constrained with these what I will get is I wrote this before in a classical uh, uh, boundary value problems uh, case, but this is the partial differential equation I'm going to get, which I call as the wave equation. Okay, and you know up there, uh, 0 to L and the T is uh, obviously larger than uh, 0. Okay, um, and I want to highlight this A squared is equal to T, which is tension, I wrote it up there, and the density, so that will be my A value. Okay, A is the speed of sound in the particular uh, material. So how many boundary conditions I need? I have a second order with respect to the space, right? So I need two boundary conditions. How about the initial conditions? I needed one in the wave equation. Right now I'm gonna need two. The reason is that I have second order with respect to the time as well, just very similar to the uh, space, okay? Uh, so let's start with the boundary conditions. It will be very similar, uh, you know? So it will have this uh, at zero, the displacement is zero. And if I have L, this is zero. Do you now get to see why I, when I was doing the heat equation, I call this uh, U as opposed to temperature, T. U is temperature, right? But now U is displacement. So we want to be consistent because you will see that the equation will look identical. On the other hand, if I'm interested in initial condition, it's just customary to define that at X is, uh, T is equal to zero, which is fine. And again, this is exactly the same what I wrote, except that I need one more and the one more will be the velocity at time is equal to zero. Um, and I can say that this is, well, let's say t is equal to zero. g of x, another function that I don't know, okay? g of x can be zero, right? But that's beyond the scope. So let me make the, the most general solution. And you can go ahead and uh, find more specific solutions yourself. Okay, what do you think I'm going to use as the approach? Well, you, you know it. It's called separation of variables. We have done this uh, multiple times, okay? And I'll go a little bit faster this time around, rewriting that. It's going to be a square. 
So it's going to be x double prime t will be equal to x t double prime. Okay, and what I will do is divide both sides by a square x t. So I can separate things, and you will see when I do that, I'll get x double prime divided by uh, x. So which is only a function of x, and the right hand side will be t double prime divided by a square uh, times t. So very similar argument that I did. This is only a function of x. This is only a function of t. So that the only reason why they can happen is that these two must, or you know, this equation must also equal to a constant, and we call this the separation constant minus lambda. And this will yield two ODEs. And you know, you know, it's very similar. The first one actually will be identical to what I have covered in the previous uh, heat equation. The second one will be a little bit different. It will be t double prime plus t prime back there. Plus a square lambda t is equal to zero. So I need to do this with initial conditions because this is a function of time. I need to do this with boundary conditions because this is a function of space. Okay, And I will not go that much in deep, but I will look at three cases, this, zero, and positive. I will put a link over here where I analyze these two cases in the heat equation, and I get myself trivial solution. Okay? There's no need to repeat the whole analysis once again. And this time, this will only give me a non-trivial solution. And if I solve it, I will get myself x is equal to c1 cosine of alpha x plus c2 sine of alpha x then I apply my boundary conditions and the boundary conditions are these so I have my string um, fixed at uh, both ends which is uh, reasonable and why, when I plug it in again you need to watch the previous segment so I'm not going to repeat it but you're going to get actual eigenvalue and eigenfunction and you're going to get alpha L is equal to n pi which gives you the alpha is equal to n pi by L, so and my n will be 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. And the corresponding eigenfunction will be C2 sine alpha, which is n pi by L, x. So in a, in a very short uh, amount of time, I did the sturm liouville problem. And the solution to the sturm liouville problem turned out to be eigenvalue and eigenfunction corresponding eigenfunction. So I'm done with that section. So now I will go to the second one. This is going to get more interesting. Why? Because the initial conditions is given as f of x and g of x, right? So we will have to do something with it. Okay. So let's go to the time. Uh, this is this is now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth because I didn't do this before. It's unique to this particular case. Um, I mean the solution. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? What is alpha squared? What's happening over here? Well, again, from the previous segment, we say that in order to highlight that my lambda is a positive value, we said alpha squared, because regardless of what the value of alpha is, alpha squared is a positive value. Lambda is known, so let's actually be much more specific, because it can only be this from the, um, the first uh, storm level problem that we solved. And if I want to go ahead and uh, write this, it's very similar to the previous equation, but I'm going to get C3 times cosine m pi a by lt. Obviously, the variables are different, plus C4 sine n pi a by lt. Okay? And like I said, you know, looking in here, uh, it is quite similar, right? The way that it looks. So, okay, the real solution is the multiplication of this and that, right? So, let's actually go ahead and write that. This is a function of n, so I'm going to write the nth term. So let's write this this way. un will be equal to c2, I'm simply repeating, n pi by lx times what I see over here, c3 cosine of n pi a by lt plus c4 sine n pi a lt. And I'm going to call c2 times c3 to be a n, okay, and I will call c2 times c4 to be b n. And if I write now, this is my nth term, I have to sum over from 1 to infinity. If we do that, you're going to see that my u x comma t will be this summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cosine of m pi by l t plus b n times 
sine m pi a by lt. I just switched orders of those so it looks more like a full series expansion. Sine simply what I have up there m pi l x. So that's uh, my solution. Okay, except obviously I don't know what an and bn are. So these Fourier series coefficients is still the question mark. Okay, so the question that I have from my direction to your direction is how am I going to find my an and bn? Well, I have two initial conditions. I have two unknowns. I should be able to do it. So why don't we approach that? The good thing is, as these are initial conditions, I define or prescribe them at t is equal to zero. It will actually make the mathematics a little bit easier. The first initial condition that I had was x comma zero is equal to f of x. This was the very first one, so let's start with that. U x comma zero. Then I will have the summation sign from n is equal to one to infinity a n times cosine of zero agreed plus b n of sine of zero agreed times I have myself sine m pi by l x that I can do much about it. I know this is zero. I know this is one. So you can see from here that my I get myself my very first initial condition as identical to the wave equation, right? And this is given to me as f of x. Okay, to watch that particular uh, uh, segment, but this is a half range sine expansion. So from the heat equation, it's very similar. So I'll have bn, when I was doing half range sine expansion as well, I call this lowercase bn, which is an this time around, will be 2 by l, integral from 0 to l, f of x times sine and pi by l x dx, okay? So this is it. So this is my an. So I was able to find the first one, okay? And the second uh, bn term, hopefully, we'll be able to find from using the second initial condition. And the second initial condition is a little bit uh, different, which uh, will require me to take the derivative or rather the partial of this displacement. And I call this g of x to be another function. Okay, so the first goal is to take this del u del t, right? Let's do it n is equal to 1 to infinity, so that doesn't change. And then I'll go back, you can see over here, I'm taking the derivative of this equation, where is it here? I'm taking the derivative of this, the cosine will be minus sine and uh, multiplied by n pi a by l, and this will become cosine n pi a l t, but then I have to multiply this by n pi a by n l as well, which is not a big deal, okay? So let's just uh, do it. So I'll have a n times minus n pi a by l sine m pi a by l t, that's the first one, plus b n n pi a by l times cosine n pi a by l and then I have to multiply the both terms by sine m pi l by l x. Why don't I do anything about this term when I'm multiplying? Right, so let's be clear in here, this will be the multiply. This is actually a constant when the partial with respect to the time is concerned. I have one more point, so I'm, you know, this looks a little bit more complicated, but I didn't even use that, right? So why don't I use it? Because this is prescribed at t is equal to zero. So I'll insert zero over here, and this is actually a good time to see that I did forget to put t over here, right? I was lucky to find it out, so I don't have to do the whole video again. Okay, so when I do that, it is very similar to the previous case. This whole thing, sine of zero is zero, cosine of uh, zero is one. Let's continue with the same uh, color. So I'm, I'm gonna have uh, g of x, okay? So basically I'm evaluating this t is equal to zero now. g of x will be equal to summation from n is equal to one to infinity. Let's see what happens to one to infinity. Um, it's gonna be bn times n pi a by l, sine and pi l by x. Okay, so this looks fairly similar to what I had for f of x. Let's go up here, I'll show you. Um, looking over here, yeah, so now this is the same. Now I had a n over here, well this is g, g of x, another function. I had a n over here, I have b n times this. Okay, so actually what I'm looking over here is then a simply a half range sine expansion of this, you know. So this is what it is, sine, uh, 
alpha and sine expansion of n pi a by l times bn. Fourier series coefficient will be n pi a by l times bn will be equal to 2 by l, 0 to l, g of x, not f, sine n pi by l x dx. Okay, did everybody see that one? So I'm, uh, you know, going up in here. So this was the an. Now this whole thing is like a an in quotation marks. Okay, so that's why I had this. And then I had to one last step. So you can see that I want to leave bn alone because that's my goal. Okay, else cancel. 2 by m pi a integral 0 to l g of x times sine m pi by l x dx. So just to summarize what we have been doing, you can see, where is it? It's right over here. So the goal was to write this. So I'm going to rewrite this down there. And I also will write what my an is, which is over here, and what my bn is, so that we can refer to this when I solve questions. So we can do fairly fast. U x comma t will be equal to summation from n is 1 to infinity. And in parentheses, a n cosine of m pi a by l t plus b n sine n pi a by l t times sine n pi by l x. Where my a n is equal to 2 by l integral 0 to l f of x times sine n pi by l x dx and my bn will be 2 by n pi a integral 0 to l gx this time around sine of n pi by l x dx okay so this is going to be very important I will be back with another video and in that one actually I'm going to take one more step, okay? And then I'll solve a question for you. Alright, thank you for watching this.